Yeah, alright. Okay, I came for a drive down to Gloucester today. We came to check out the Drifter four wheel drive uh, in town stall. And then Luke's here as well. He's going to take us out for a bit of a tour of the workshop today. Let's have a look around the store here. Super cool. They have so much stuff here. It's incredible how much stuff they have. But uh, yeah, just having a bit of a tour of the shop, have a look at around the other gear. Luke's showing us what's going on, and then we're going to head out to the workshop in a minute. We should get one of these. That's so comfy. <laughs> There's a fan in here as well. No way. Yeah, there's a fan. And there's lights. Yeah, I can see the lights. Imagine how cool this would be camping in this. Do you want one? Yeah. And then you can hop out and have a shower. And then you can um, use the dual battery system to straighten your hair. Perfect. Oh, look. It's got like a hot water system on it too. That's it. After a look around their shop in town, Luke led us not too far away to the Drifter four-wheel driving camping factory. Give us a bit of a behind the scenes tour and a look at how some of their things are made and manufactured right there in Gloucester. Luke began the Drifter business himself nearly 20 years ago. It started as him designing kitchens for camper trailers and he then grew it into vans and four-wheel drives as well. Custom drawer setups in the back of vans and four-wheel drives is still one of their biggest things that they manufacture and produce today. Uh, I think he said it was about 40 custom drawer setups they make there a week. Some of their other big sellers today are their off-road camper trailers, the Dot Range, as well as recovery gear, leather work, the handmade bags, they've got a massive range of stuff there. During the tour he gave us, I was just amazed at how many people they have working there and how big the operation is. I think he said it was nearly 100 staff he has working for him now. Having fun in your, this thing. Mm -hmm. It's like your own personal shade and snack mobile. Yeah, it's quite a good windshield these days. You can't you can't buy a windshield, so we make a lot of different types. Put this cover here. So I gave you a silver sword, did I? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, lots of people were impressed with those silver swords. You'd sell a few of them, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing really else that sort of compares. No, to them. Like yeah, this year, I think, well, yeah, this year's a hundred year old, that company. Really? It's been through the factory where they make the blades, I think. It's, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. This is a new product, too. I don't know if you've seen that, but if you've got a big soft shackle, it yeah. won't fit through that. Or yeah. if you've got a soft shackle like the gator joint, right? Yeah. These are now got a, um, like a waxy coating. Yeah. Right, feel that. So it's sort of a bit waxy. Yeah. We'd say, but because they don't make these to suit these, so the coating's not right. Yeah. So you can't really use, or say the ARB soft shackle, it's got a rubbery sleeve on it, right? Yeah. You couldn't use an ARB soft shackle with one of these. So, this is what we call a shorty rope, and that's, this is a special rope, I've got this custom coating, for, then you put your ARB soft shackle through there, and you run off that there. So it's just a small extension that runs off, off, off your ring. So, your with those rings, there. It, with a normal soft shackle, do they not work properly? They do with our soft shackles. Yeah, and they take the sleeve off yep. to put it through there. So if you're going to do that... So that, does that need to rotate as you winch in, does it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So if you had a dead man soft shackle, then that's not going to work real good. Yeah. It's supposed to be slippery and that's the idea. Yeah. But no one's really... Uh, Red Winch, who's these guys, they don't make 
any other recovery gear except for that. Yeah. Dead men who do, they, they're the biggest in recovery gear until we come along, which yeah. we sell a lot of their gear. The, problem, the reason I started making my own is because these are all American based. 80 bucks, and then the dollar's been dropping, the American dollar's going up. So these started at 69, then they're 79, 89, and they could end up being 100 bucks. You know, we got no control of the dollar. Yeah. So that's when I started. The dollar's pretty own. terrible at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it is. Hey, hey, how you going? Kayla. Hello. Good things. Hello. Hello. Do you do you reckon that these soft shackles and ropes and that are sort of taken over the market now? Like yeah, the straps yeah. and hard shackles are on their yeah. way out. Yeah, definitely. There's, There's not really any steel in your recovery kit. There's not really like much benefit of using a hard shackle over a soft shackle. Like they're a little bit stronger, but. There's just the dangers of using one well, compared weight, to a speed. You know, if, you're back, if you're driving a bog and your car's got on water and you want to just get something on real quick, so yeah. the shackle takes time. Speed is a big thing. The weight, the safety, quicker, safer, easier. Uh, it's a bit harder to lose. Like your CMEs leader sort of float in mud or water yeah, or whatever yeah. rather than straight to the bottom never to be seen. And Kai, show us the press quickly. Like press out an axle. Tell me two years to find this machine. I did it for a year and then So did you start the drifter here in Gloucester? Is that where it started? No, in Blaney. So I was in Blaney, west, west of Bathurst. Yeah, yeah. Bathurst or in Blaney. Yeah. Yeah, you did it for three years there, then came here. Was that just by yourself when you started? And that was doing the leather stuff? Leather. No, no, just kitchens. Just kitchens. I've been doing it for three years. So yeah. yeah. So you're all just buying this bulk rope and then cutting yeah. it and then making the knots of it? Yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Soft that's shackle knot. Yeah. So what? That can't come undone then. No, that's only um, first tie. So from there we've got a still a few steps to get to say to that. That's finished there now. Yeah. So there's a lot of lot of steps in it. But then from there we've got to do a hand tie. Every, sock, every one of these different colours and the different styles is, is a different coating. So the rope space is the same, but they're all different coatings. So that, yeah, you can see that's pretty close. Yeah. So the next day we do that tighter again with the tool. Yeah. Get it real tight, and then we thread that down through there and that stuff. Yeah. Put a sleeve with it. So they're making it reasonably quick once you know you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Whack a sleeve on it and put it in the bag and away we go. Good to go. I've never, I've never towed a trailer in my life, so I have, okay. I have limited knowledge on trailers. Yeah, it's just compact trailer. Yeah. World first, lot of stuff in here. The thing what we've done with this is got rid of all gas. Yeah. Because gas is, you know, one, you can't use any gas in, in the fire van. And gas bottle is heavy to carry and you've got to hook it up all the time. So that's a world first, it's a 240 volt electric hot water instant. So that's in there, running off. You want one of them? Inverter. Yeah. Um, this is a big ensuite. We'll have a look in there. So we've just finished that. It's, some of those components are world first in the RV industry. So what's that? Two batteries, 2001 inverter. Yeah. 
and solar. DC, DC charger. Controllers. Yeah. So we've got um, solar on the roof. It's 525 solar on the roof. Yeah. And 250 plug in, so they need different solar controllers. Yeah. DC, DC, 240 volt charger, inverter, and then all your switching, electronic switching. Yeah. All on the phone. Everything's on the phone. Yeah. As well. First for us. That's that an electric, electric. Electric induction, yeah. yeah. So I've never used them before, How come really? you've gone electric over gas? Yeah, we're trying to get rid of all gas. So yeah. this is all running off the sun, right? Yeah. And the thing is with this, total five minutes, you can't use gas yeah. at all. Yeah. The wind, the pad hates with the gas. First you've got to get the gas bottle to hook it up. And people hate to the gas bottle up. Yeah. Then the jets block up. The wind blows the gas away. Half the heat's wasted. Uh, a little bit, you know, you've got to be very careful with gas, with the connections, and also you've got a flame. This is 100% efficient, you don't have to worry about all that, so yeah, no gas bottle. We're trying to get, that's what we've done, so no gas for the hot water, no gas for here. So, once you pull it out, you just turn it on and away you go. And there's no heat, so we can put all the stuff around here, like sauce and everything, there's no heat transfer, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, so first time we've done it. Here's our... Storage, storage set up area. in there. Power point there for the inverter. Yeah. Um, storage there like a pantry. Here's our storage box. We've got drawers there. Fridge there. The big part of this system is these controls. So we've still got quite got to label these yet, but you can see there. So lights come on and off, and you've got full controls here. You've got a barometer. You've got an implementer. You've got so much data on this thing, and it's, uh, this the whole RV industry is going this way. This is the world first, but they're all going this way. It's amazing what it is now compared to what it used to be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The camping and four-wheel driving industry. And then, uh, yeah, this is our rooftop tent, so 525 watts of solar up on top of that. So you make your own rooftop tents, do you? Now, the thing with a soft bag rooftop tent is you spend half the time trying to get the bag on and off. It's a big effort because it's so high. Yeah. But no, it's literally just that, you know. Two latches pop it up and This is our new family one, so oh, yes. that's, that's we got a patent on this, so it's the first one in the world, which is instead that's the same shell, but instead of going up that way it folds sideways. Okay. So if you've got two kids right, you can't fit them in here. Yeah. So basically this now lifts up vertical, which you've got a big tent there, and then this then drops down horizontal and the kids down there. Yeah. That's a kids mattress with inside that, so yeah. first ever family rooftop tent in a hard shell. So I'm just going to put one of these Factor 55 hooks on the front of my winch here rather than the traditional hook I had. Um, so I'm going to set that up on the front now, it should look good. What's the benefits of using these over the old hooks? Is it anything? like? Well, they're made for soft shackles. For yeah. Which I'm using now, soft shackles. Yeah. And the other thing is, you know, this hook basically, quite a small hook that, but, you know, they sort of dangle around and they, you know, knock about. Yeah. Um, and also your rope's out the front there, so a lot of people will have it like that. Yeah. And the rope can get, you know, sticks or rocks or whatever and get damaged. Yeah. You've really got to be looking after the rope, you don't want to get damaged at all. Because once they fray, that's a weak point for them. Yeah, that's right. And, um, you know, if that's hanging down there, um, just a bit messy and noisy, but with the idea without it, it's something like that. Yeah, so it's nice and neat out of the way. And rather than trying to have to hook it on somewhere else and then, because a lot of people hook them on the recovery points yeah. and then you go and try and get them and yeah, that's right. so you, it's a long you way can't under. get them. It's a lot of rope there that gets yeah. you know, sun damage and just some rocks and sticks and stuff. So yeah. The other thing too is with your soft shackles, so if you go and try and hook it up to say, even a tree trunk protector, it's hard yeah. to get people. Because you can't fit much through that hook because I know with my tree trunk protector I had to put a shackle there to then get that hook through kind of yeah, thing sure. like yeah. it, you couldn't yeah and if I mean it's, it's a little bit unsafe if what you're trying to put on there doesn't fully get connected by it there see that you can't even get it on there so yeah that needs to be locked fully locked closed otherwise it's not a closed loop yeah. so that's not a closed loop system whereas uh, they call this a closed loop system so yeah you know it's fully uh, it's not gonna fully slip out of there yeah. So if you're putting one of these on, you really need to get the synthetic rope spool. They're only they're $39, synthetic rope spool. So that's just a small piece here. You can't really put your rope directly around that. Yeah. You could do, right? I could do that now and splice that in. Yeah. But you've got what's called a minimum diameter radius, which is the smaller that radius, the weaker the rope is. Yeah. You get to a point where it will impact the strength. Yeah. Where with that on there, you'll still maintain 100% of the strength of the rope. So that's what that's for. We're going to go about 500 mils. 
And the other really handy tool is this little fid. So if you've got this tool, you can basically, if you snapped your winch rope out, out on the tracks, you can repair it with this. So you could splice this rope back up again with this tool, back to I think 90% of the strength of the rope, right okay. in the middle of your winch rope. So do you, do people buy them off you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can hit some. So, so it's just that, right? So they come in half. Yeah. And with one of these, you can do anything with your rope. You can splice it up. So if you wanted to buy one of those, yeah. and this here, and, and you need to fit, yeah. and you can do all that on your own. Yeah. And it's a good idea, we say to people, it's a good idea to do this yourself, because then if you've never used it, you get out the tracks and you go to use it and you break your line, you won't know what to do. And all it is, it's all the ropes the same. Gonna get down I'm splicing it through three times. And the main thing here is just a matter of uh, hitting through the middle of that rope. It's a 12 strand rope, so it's a little bit easy to go five and seven, but you've got to get six and six each side. Yeah. Right, so we've just gone through three times, right? One, two, three. And we'll put our little heavy rope spool on. Tighten that up. Okay, so that's on the tight. And then we want to thread that through to this point there. Okay, so a little bit further. Put a mark there. So you've got to keep threading it through the whole way through. Yeah. And that'll then never come undone. So just make sure it's got to be, what is it, six? Oh yeah, right back through the middle. So yeah, six and six on each yeah, side. Just what? When you're doing through here, six and six on yeah, each side. Yeah. But when you're threading here, it's got to go directly down the center. Yeah. And being careful, you don't, you don't miss, you know, come out and back in again. So yeah. you can feel it going down the center. Yeah. It's thin ropes. So you're a little bit past. Yeah. And then it's just a matter of getting it nice and tight. Get it up nice and tight in there. That's it. Now, some people also say you got, and I do a lot to, to uh, tape that in back. Yeah. But on soft rope like that, you don't need to do it. Yeah. Uh, you can see how it sort of comes over there. Yeah. Not necessary to tape it, and I, I don't tape it particularly because if it's tapered, it, it is easy to slide back out. Yeah. And once you use that, that'll sort of set. Once you got pressure on it, it'll sort of set and it'll never come and done. Pull itself back and then yeah. do it. So that's ready to go there. Yeah. And then it's a matter of getting this pin out. Get some, it's really important to get the right size circlet pliers for this. Oh, it's got a circlet on there. The other thing, too, with these is. You've got to be um, careful that you don't <coughs> uh, damage the fair lid on the front. Because that's like a steel one, it's okay. But if you're putting this back in all the way to there, right? Yeah. You can actually damage the fair lid, right? Yeah. So if you do that, say your mate's putting it back into the sea, it's okay to go that way. Yeah. And that's why you come back in here, so you're not damaging it. This little ring there can damage your fair lid. As soon as you've got a little nick on that, then you're going to damage the rope. Yeah. So that's the other reason we get rid of that, and we put the synthetic rope spool on. Yeah. So that now just goes in there. Titanium pin. Yeah. Just goes back on. So if you want to uh, pull your wrist back in. Pull that a bit tighter. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit more. That's it. That's it. It's so go. much nicer than the hook. And if you pull it out, it's coming out. There it is reading it. And 
Um, so you don't need a sleeve on that now because yeah. that's um, ready to go. You can even leave a soft shuckle on there if you want to. Yeah. But, um, that's soft shuckle friendly. Yeah. And then up there, nice and neat, pulling back up again. It doesn't yeah. rattle around, doesn't bang things mm. like the old one. You can see the difference from what you got. So that's, you know, I mean, that's not going to break, but this here is a problem. Mostly that there's a problem. Yeah. That, that is very easy to break. And then yeah. you don't have a pin, it's not a safe system. Yeah. Um, you know, you're halfway winch up a, up a hill, and one of you, you, you back off a little bit with a bit of slack, and you re winch, and then your, your loop slips off. Yeah. You got a winch and it pulls back. So yeah. that's a very safe system. And so you knew that. That's. That's is what you just did then, that's the same way you'd repair a winch rope on the yeah. tracks, is it? Yeah. yeah. So if you had a winch extension rope, yeah. which is that, right? I mean, what we've done there is exactly that knot as well. Yeah. So if I snap that rope on the tracks, okay, I could, and I've got this here, you can just... So easy, so easy to fix. Yeah. Glue on that side. So these recovery points are a great example of a sharp recovery point, right? Yeah. If you, if you, if you snapped off that with an un, unsharp, un, Unsleeved soft shackle, you'd probably uh, probably break the soft shackle. Yeah. Just cut it in half. But with that sleeve on there, you'll never will. You can pull off that the time come again. So when you're going away for a weekend or a week, and you'd be able to just sort of set this up quickly, and then you're there ready for recovery. Yeah. Yeah. I'll put a sleeve on here as well. There's your block. It's so much better for your vehicle. Yeah. And for stuff if you're snatching it from there, winching, snatching, whatever. Yeah. All right. And then when you're on the track. Tied up on top it. there. Right. Drive into a bog hole. Right, we want to get out quick. Throw up there. Soft shuffle around there. And your winch or your um, snatch strap up there. There you go. So much lighter and safer than using all hard gear as yeah. well. Yeah, I mean you can't really do that. You can't do a bridle out of steel. You yeah. just can't do it. Yeah. And you can also, if you want to, if you don't have a clay bitch, you can lift that up. Yeah, well you may as well leave that on there because I'm taking up yeah. the car to Sarbo to yeah. head away tomorrow. And also on the back of all our uh, gear, we've got the test data. You can see the 20 ton soft shackle, or it's a 20 ton green, which is this one. Yeah. And it hasn't broken off 60 seconds at 20 ton. Yeah. Right. So that hasn't even broken at 20 ton. Yeah. That's how we rate it. This is another little box I'm replacing that old plastic one I had in the back here. So this is the one mil aluminium box to go in the back of the ute. So I replaced that plastic one, I have so much better. But it takes up a similar amount of space, but fits a whole lot more. And I'm going to keep all my camp gear, cooking gear, utensils and everything in here. What's the name of this company? What were they? Alibox. Alibox. Yeah, yeah so I've used this to replace the other one there. Made in Denmark. Good looking box, but. Yeah, so well. water dustproof, seal there, latch it up. Latch it there if you need to as well. And they, you know, if you get the same size, they've got a little bit of size, but they sort of stack them on top as well. Even when I put my, I just put my gear in there, and put that plastic one on, they've got so much more room. I might just need to rearrange these. Well, that fits me. Put it down there anyway. Look at that, perfect fit. Oh, my God. Back home from drifting now, it's pretty awesome day out down there at Gloucester. It's amazing uh, that tour we did through the workshop there, like such a massive place and all those things we do in there. I had to go down there today and pick up this box um, and then Luke sort of said, oh do you want to have a look, I'll show you around the store, I'll show you around the workshop. So I said, yeah sure. And I just asked if I could film it too. You know, I thought it'd be interesting to give a little bit of a behind the scenes look at how the jury think there. I always find that stuff interesting. And then when I was down there picking up that box, he sorted me out with a bit of new recovery gear as well. So I thought I'd quickly run through all this stuff I got here because it's pretty cool what I got. Actually, the first thing is in their leather shop there, Kaido made, made me up this um, stubby holder there with my name and picture of the nav and everything. It was pretty cool. Now, in relation to recovery gear, we got that bridle on the front, which is like a bridle. So basically, you can then pull off both your recovery points either at the front or back. That way you're evening out your pull rather than just pulling off one point. So we've got that bridle hooked up on the front there with the soft shackles as well. We've got a couple of soft shackles on the front there. We also have this other one he gave me which is the big 20 ton soft shackle. I think those other ones are rated to 14 ton either way. It's all like overkill. You know, you're dealing with 
three and a half ton car, you know, extra with your pull and force, but you're not going to break things that you know, it'll break like a 20 ton shackle. They come with these sleeve on them as well, which if you are getting a soft shackle, get one with a sleeve on it. Because if you're using these raw, most recovery points, why they're not sharp, sharp edges where you cut yourself on them, pulling them on these ropes, they will nick them. So what if you're getting soft shackles, which I, as I said, go with soft shackles these days over hard shackles, get one with a sleeve. But they make all them themselves there in the, in the shops. Mozzies everywhere. Got a little snatch ring rather than the old snatch block, so you're talking like five times a weight. This is the old one I had ARB snatch block. This is the new new little drifter snatch ring. Uh, obviously a lot lighter, smaller, and all it is is for winching. It gives you double the strength, so a double line pull if you're really stuck and <laughs> need some serious pulling. Uh, these take the soft shackle through the middle. He actually gave me this. This is a specific one they make to go with it. You can use these ones, it's all good. You just take the sleeve off because they got a smooth surface in there. You do it without the sleeve and it rotates around on that fine as it pulls, but if you want to get the one to go with it, he said these are pretty cheap because they're a bit of a different smoother material and they're rated 14 ton as well. And then that'll uh, spin around on it much easier kind of thing when you are pulling. So you obviously go that and then through to uh, your winch hook or your soft shackle or whatever you're doing. We've got the Factor 55 winch hook on the front, which is awesome. Replace this uh, hook that was on there. Basically the main difference is the Factor 55 is a closed system, whereas this is like that hook, so that can break, pop out, and then uh, you got winch rope going flying somewhere, which is unlikely, but that is the main difference. I think it looks a lot better. And they also pull in, rather than a hook flapping around up there, so they pull in, they sit nice and neat and even up on the front of you bull bar there snatch rope the snatch recoveries i've been through this before uh snatch rope a bit more expensive but basically the main difference is compared to a snatch strap these have 30 percent elasticity according to the stats whereas a snatch 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 <laughs> snatch strap has 20 percent so when you're pulling uh you're easier on your cars you're less likely to break things you know, these are kind of the new way to go if you're willing to spend that bit extra money. Got a cool bag here as well. They make all their own handmade bags there. Um, and then you can, you know, I'll fill this up with all my recovery gear. And I've got a snatch extension strap. So this is my old ARB one. Snatch, this is a snatch extension, no, winch extension rope compared to a winch extension strap. So I'm about half the weight here. And obviously if I, like, wind this up, tightly then it's going to be uh, smaller than that you know, the thing is when you build these four-wheel drives you got that much weight going on in relation to bull bars and winches and lights and roof rack and everything so if you can try and bring the weight down in other areas it's going to help you and you know it's not you're not talking a couple of kilos like by the time you get rid of your traditional D shackles your snatch block your rope everything you know you're talking you know 20 30 kilos there saved easily um, oh and this is awesome now this is a Factor 55 that they sell tool for splicing synthetic rope. So this is, if you snap a winch rope, you can splice it back together using this little tool here. So it comes in packet, but all it is is those two things there. Now that's how he put that Factor 55 rope on, uh, Factor 55 hook on using these, and takes a few minutes and made it look bloody easy. <laughs> now you can do it other ways, you know, there's videos out there how to splice your winch rope back together using, I don't know, bloody pens and tape and scissors and various things. But I watch them and I think, oh man, I don't know, <laughs> I'm not going to remember that. I remember how to do that, whereas this, it's like three steps and it's <laughs> very simple. So if you're not an expert like me, then that's definitely a good little piece of kit to have to splice your winch rope back together, should it break. main reason I went down there to, was to pick up this alley box, which is an extra box to go in the back there. A lot more room in it than that old plastic one I have, but I'm going to keep all my camping gear, cutlery and everything in, everything in there. But they're a pretty sweet, awesome uh, looking box. Strong, you can use it as a seat. Dust, waterproof, you got latches on here so you can lock it if you need be. Yeah, that's about everything. We're off the coughs this weekend, so I'm sure I'll be putting some of it to use. But it was a pretty awesome day out seeing all that behind the scenes and got some new gear here to test out. Ah, uh, yeah. Binary.
Yeah, that's what I reckon to do. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Alright, slowly, start going. 